So from what we've just calculated from the equation of the Schwarzschild radius, you'd have to compress the Earth right down to this size, the size of a small marble, if you wanted to make it into a black hole. Now, uh, that's going to be pretty difficult to do, but there is no physical reason why that cannot be achieved. Black hole is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light, and hence it would appear to be black. Carl Schwarzschild, in I think it was 1917, uh, used Einstein's theory of gravity uh, and solved Einstein's equations for the case of a spherical object, like a star. And when you look at his equations, he realized there's some very special weird radius, which we now know as a Schwarzschild radius, such that if all the matter from an object were compressed down to within that radius, it would become a black hole. So, for example, the sun. If we don't think the sun will become a black hole, it's not massive enough, but if you wanted to make the sun into a black hole, you'd have to crush it down uh, with some gigantic cosmic crushing device so that the entire sun was contained within a radius of three kilometers. The symbol for it is R subscript S, and it's quite a simple one. Uh, it's 2 G M over c squared. So g is a gravitational constant we've already covered from Newton. Uh, c is the speed of light and m is the mass of the object that we're talking about in, in kilograms. You, you're asking me about the Earth and I thought yeah we can work out how small if you had one of these gigantic intergalactic crushing devices that I've never come across but you know. Uh, if you wanted to crush the Earth down to make a black hole out of it how small would you have to crush the Earth down to? So how small do you think it would have to be? The mass of the Earth, I think it's uh, something like 6 times 10 to the power 24 kilograms. And then divided by c squared, c is 3 times 10 to the 8. So it's around about uh, 8 millimetres. So less than a centimetre. Here's my messy little ruler. So 8 millimetres is about that big. So that line is the radius that you would have to crush the Earth down to if you wanted that radius to be, if you wanted to make the Earth into a black hole. Uh, so it's about, as you can see, about the size of a marble. There's a, there's a popular misconception in movies and so on, in the recent Star Trek movie, for example, that black holes are somehow these cosmic vacuum cleaners that go around hoovering planets up. Uh, let's say that our sun tomorrow were to turn into a black hole. Okay, we don't think it will, but let's say you were to crush it down and make a black hole out of our sun. Uh, of course, that would be bad for life on Earth. There'd be no more heat and light, and we'd all die. Okay, but uh, the Earth and all the planets would continuing would continue orbiting around the sun just as they do now. They wouldn't be sucked in. On if you're sufficiently far away as we are, you just continue on your orbit. One interesting thing for astronomy is we now believe that every galaxy contains a very massive black hole. So uh, galaxies are collections of stars. Uh, our own Milky Way galaxy contains maybe 100 billion stars. Over the last 10 years, we've realized that every galaxy we look at contains or shows strong evidence for a very massive black hole in its nucleus. Uh, some of the millions, in some cases, up to a, a several billion times the mass of the sun. So we're talking about real monster black holes. What do they look like? Well, the black hole itself, of course, is completely invisible. So you might say, well, how on earth do we find it? How do we detect them? And the reason for that is um, there's an intense radiation uh, radiated very close to the black hole. And that energy all basically comes from gravity. I'll try and explain that. Because black holes are so dense and so compact, if you were to throw stuff onto a black hole, by the time it falls down close to the center, uh, if it was able to orbit down, uh, it would be travelling at very close to the speed of light. As it, all, as it falls onto the black hole, it would, it would chain very, very high velocities. The particles all bang together and heat up. And that's how you liberate the energy, uh, from material heating up and colliding in the immediate vicinity of the black hole, just before it falls in and disappears forever. The evidence for the existence of black holes has become very strong now. In fact, most astronomers you'd speak to uh, would say the evidence is now overwhelming. Actually, the strongest evidence for the existence of a black hole actually comes from the monster in our own Milky Way. If you were to look towards the centre of our Milky Way, 
of our Milky Way galaxy, which is very, it's very hard to, to, to see it, actually, because you've got to look through all the intervening gas and stuff. Uh, so you do that in the infrared or in the radio that can penetrate through all the intervening material. So this is zooming right in to the dynamic center of our galaxy. So if there is a black hole there, it should be located where that cross is. So this is zooming right into the very central region, and this is an, an image taken with a special infrared camera. And in the top left here, you can see uh, there's a clock. And it starts off in 1992, and we're going to run a movie over about 15 years. And basically, if there is a black hole there, you should see stars moving, and they'll move more rapidly closer to the central object. If there's no black hole there, the stars would hardly move at all, and they'd move randomly. And bear in mind, this is real data. So you see the clock ticking by now, and you can clearly see stars are moving. So we're going to zoom right into the galactic center, and you see this star in particular, not only does it move, it undergoes a complete orbit. And we can use the laws of physics to use all of those orbits of all those stars to weigh what must be present at the center of that, uh, the center of our galaxy. And what you require is something that weighs four million times the mass of the sun, that's essentially invisible, contained within a region not much bigger than our solar system. So for me, that's pretty overwhelming evidence that there's a black hole in the galactic center.